We are here at Pilgrim United Church of Christ in Carlsbad, California. And this is our Pilgrim Anti-Racism Book Club. We're continuing the work we started last year when we first read White Fragility. And then we read by, by Robin D'Angelo. And then we read Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. We are now beginning our winter book club by reading James Baldwin and um, first The Fire Next Time today. And in the subsequent three weeks, we'll be reading parts one, two, and three of Notes of a Native Son. There are two essays in The Fire Next Time. And the first essay, the letter to his nephew, uh, strikes me as, in its brevity, one of the most profound essays that I've ever read, or that's ever been written. One of the things that, that I noticed um, right away is within this brief essay, he says five, maybe six times that the core of the problem or the, is, is that white people are not free. That's the conclusion he comes to. He says, we celebrated the emancipation the hundred years too soon on the hundredth anniversary because we black people can't be free until white people are free. And white people cannot be free until they accept themselves for who they are, human beings and not superior beings. And it is that superiority that drives systemic racism, that drives all of what they used to call the Negro problem. Just a few verses, uh, verses. This, is, this is scripture, if you will. Uh, I'll have to increase my font so I can read it here. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, well, that's good. Did you do that? Yeah. From the oh, I forgot to mute. Would you mute everybody except me? Well, I have to do that. Okay. Um, what now? That's from later in the essay. Let me get down to where I want to be. Okay. In short, we the black and white deeply need each other here if we are really to become a nation if we are really, that is, to achieve our identity, our maturity as men and women. The Negro's past of rope, fire, torture, castration, infanticide, rape, death, and humiliation, fear by day and night, fear as deep as the marrow of the bone, doubt that he was worthy of life. Since everyone around him denied it, sorrow for his women, for his kinfolk, for his children who needed his protection and whom he could not protect. Rage, hatred, and murder, hatred for the white man so deep that it often turned against him and his own and made all love, all trust, all joy impossible. This past, this endless struggle to achieve and reveal and confirm a human identity, human authority, yet contains for all its horror, something very beautiful. I do not mean to be sentimental about suffering. Enough is certainly as good as a feast. But people who cannot suffer can never grow up can never discover who they are. That man who was forced each day to snatch his manhood, his identity, out of the fire of human cruelty that rages to destroy it, knows. Rages to destroy it, knows that if he survives his effort, and even if he does not survive, something about himself and human life that no school on earth and indeed no church can teach 
If one is continually surviving the worst that life can bring, one eventually ceases to be controlled of a fear by a fear of what life can bring. Whatever it brings must be born. The heart of what he's saying is that this life that black folks have lived has actually given black people the humanity that seems to continually escape white people. The objective seems to be in the American dream to live without risk, to create an existence that is fenced off by white picket fences and guarded by high walls and gated and gated entryways to be able to live without risk. But James Baldwin is saying life without risk is not life. And in another place he says, the real freedom for white people is when they can become black. And he doesn't mean that in any way in terms of complexion, but he means it in terms of living life with risk, sharing the risk that's been imposed on black people in this country. So when we take up the cause of another person and put our safety at risk, we become a part of that community. It's not something we do for others. It's something we do for ourselves because our own humanity is on the line. This is what I think he is trying to say in this first essay. As King would later say, we are bound in a mutuality of a mutual web of humanity. Baldwin says to his son, his, his nephew rather, over and over again, do not believe what white people say about you. He said his father, whose funeral they, he was reflecting on, had, had really been defeated long before he died because in his heart, he believed what white people said about, them, about him. Over and over again, he returns to that theme. Do not believe what they tell you you are. And when you believe only what you know of yourself, that's when you are free. And when they begin to see themselves as they are, then they will be free. And the Negro problem, he says, will no longer be a problem because it will no longer be needed. White people will no longer need black people to look down on in order to understand who they are. So I'll end there. Just wanted to get the conversation going and, and give you some ideas and some thoughts. Those were mine. I'm going to end our Facebook Live broadcast and going to.